Hello, in this video we're going to look at tax incidents. We're going to analyze the impact of per unit taxes or excise taxes using the supply and demand model. The key formula is going to be given by this. The fraction of tax paid by buyers will equal the price elasticity of supply divided by the price elasticity of supply minus the price elasticity of demand. So we're going to do a number of examples here showing the usefulness of this formula. In example one, the supply elasticity is 0.8 and the demand elasticity is minus 0.8. Neither side of the market is more or less elastic than the other. Substituting these results into our formula, we see that the fraction of tax paid by buyers is one half. So what does that mean? It means that the tax burden is equally shared between buyers and sellers. If there was a $2 per unit tax, for example, consumers would pay only half the tax or $1 in the form of higher prices. And sellers would pay half the tax, $1 in the form of lower prices. So that's example one. Example two, the price elasticity of supply equals one and the price elasticity of demand equals minus 0.5. Notice in this example that the demand side of the market is relatively more inelastic. Substituting these elasticities into our formula, the price elasticity of supply and the price elasticity of demand, we see that under these conditions, the fraction of tax paid by buyers will now equal two-thirds. So the majority of the tax Oops, excuse me. The majority of the tax will be paid by buyers in the form of higher prices. So consumers will pay two-thirds of the tax. So if we were to have maybe a $6 tax in this market, consumers would pay two-thirds of that or $4 in the form of higher prices. They'd be paying exactly $4 more per good now in the face of a $6 tax in the market. <clears throat> The key insight is that the relatively inelastic side of the market, in this case it happens to be the demand side, will pay the majority of the tax. Example three. Here the price elasticity of supply is zero. Uh, that corresponds to a vertical supply curve or a perfectly inelastic supply curve. The price elasticity of demand is minus 1.5. Plugging these results into the market, we see that the fraction of tax paid by buyers is zero. The entire tax burden in this case will be, will be placed on sellers in the form of lower prices. Okay, example four, um, kind of another extreme. Here we have a supply elasticity of 0.75 and the demand elasticity, price elasticity of demand of zero. In this example, we have a vertical demand curve or a perfectly inelastic demand curve. Plugging these results into the formula, uh, plugging these results into the formula, we see that consumers will pick up all the tax in the form of higher prices. So with a vertical demand curve, buyers bear the entire burden of the tax. For example, if there happened to be a $3 tax placed in this market, buyers would be paying exactly $3 now, $3 more for the good now. Example five, um, supply elasticity again of 0 0.75. The price elasticity of demand is perfectly elastic or minus infinity. Here we're dealing with a horizontal demand curve. Plugging these results into the formula, the fraction of tax paid by buyers will be zero with a horizontal demand curve. Sellers will bear the entire burden of the tax. All right, uh, so that's it with examples. If you're interested now, I'll go through the proof of the formula. And so this is going to be the proof of the tax incidence formula that we started these slides off with. So we'll start by recognizing that a tax creates a wedge between what buyers pay and sellers receive. The change in the tax paid by buyers minus the change in the price received. Uh, this should be received by sellers, equals the change in the tax. So mathematically, we can write this like this. 
uh, in calculus format. So we get the change in the price paid by buyers minus the change in the price received by sellers will equal the change in the tax. And down here, if we were to just solve for the change in the price received by sellers, manipulating this equation, you get something like that. Okay, moving on. To maintain equilibrium, the change in quantity demanded will need to equal the change in quantity supplied. So in calculus notation, we can write it like this. Note that quantity demanded is just a function of price. If we were to take the total differential of this thing over here, the demand function, we would get a result that looks like this. The change in quantity demanded equals the derivative of the demand function with respect to price multiplied by the change in price. And what I'm going to do then, I'm going to substitute this right-hand result here into this formula above. We can do a similar thing for the supply side of the market. We have a supply function. If we were to take the total differential of it, we would get this result. And all I'll do here is do another substitution, take the right-hand side of this equation, and plug it in to, into uh, the formula up here. And that's what the next slide will begin, showing those substitutions. So after making the substitutions, we have this result. And I'm going to do another substitution. Uh, I showed earlier that the change in the price received by sellers can be expressed as the change in the price paid by buyers minus the change in the tax. I'm just going to plug that in above here. So doing that, we get this result. And then uh, multiplying the, the stuff in parentheses by the derivative of the, of the supply function with respect to price, the right-hand side now becomes this. The next step, as I note here uh, in parentheses, is we're going to divide everything through by the change in tax. So I'm going to divide this by change in tax. I'm going to divide this by change in tax. And I'm going to divide this by change in tax. And that gives us this final result on this screen. You'll notice that the change in tax divided by the change in tax is just one, so that's why it's missing here. Everything else, though, has a change in tax in the denominator. Uh, and then to begin the next slide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first term on the right-hand side of the equation and move it over to the left-hand side. Okay, so that this term over here used to be on the right-hand side. Uh, now I moved it over to the left-hand side, and now we have this equation. The next step is to multiply everything through by minus 1. So this positive becomes a negative, this negative now becomes a positive, and same thing on the right-hand side, a negative times a negative leaves us a positive. So once that result is established, now I'm going to do some um, factoring. I am going to factor out the change in the price paid by buyers divided by the change in tax. I'm going to do that on the left-hand side. And once I do that, I'm going to divide everything through by what's in parentheses here. And that leads us to this step down here. So we got the derivative of the supply equation with respect to price divided by the derivative of the supply equation with respect to price minus the derivative of the demand equation with respect to price. And then the last trick we can do is just going to multiply every term here on uh, the, the right-hand side by the ratio of price to quantity. And you might now recognize what we're looking at is a bunch of price elasticity formulas. The numerator here is nothing more than the price elasticity of supply. This thing down here is, once again, the price elasticity of supply minus the price elasticity of demand. This is just the price elasticity of demand formula. So I hope you found this proof, proof helpful. Okay, that's it.